Welcome to the Self-Publishing Tips and Tricks Show, a series designed to give you insight into the world of self-publishing and marketing your books. Featuring your hosts, Shannon, the author behind the pen name SC Houston, Ben Pick, and Morgan Lee. Join us several times each month when we interview authors about their self-publishing and marketing journeys, talk to industry leaders, and discuss books about writing, self-publishing, and marketing. Hi, everyone. I'm Shannon. I write under the pen name of SC Houston, and I'm the author of the Curse of Scales and Feathers and the Clash of Goddesses series. Today, we have a specific topic episode in which we're going to talk to a new fantasy author, Devin Gambrell clark and she's going to give us insight into setting up an author platform with outside-the-box thinking. Before we talk to her, let's give some updates on whatever's happening in our author lives, and note that we are recording this in May with the episode airing July 1st. Well, yeah, I am Ben Pick. Every Monday night, you can find me at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Writing to Write, where I give questionable writing advice through running metaphors. I am focused wholly on book four right now, so, well, not, that's not entirely true. I'm focused on mostly book four, while while also trying to market my earlier books. And that's really all that is my primary focus right now. Uh, so if I'm not working, I'm trying to start developing for book four. So you got a backlist problem now. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're a brand new author. You have one book to publish and, and market and you're like, oh, this is good. This is easy. And then you get all this backlist like, oh my gosh, I should get this going. Well, I do have a couple of things going for that. Um, so yeah. actually, well, we're recording this in May. So next week I'm doing a free um, book promotion within KDP. And then I'm doing a couple of other things between now and the time in which we record. So I don't need to go too far into them because they'll have already passed. Nice. And my name is Morgan Lee. I am an author of two books so far, the first two in a dark fantasy trilogy and book three. Um, as of recording this, I am in the revision process of book three. But when this airs in July, we'll be about um, eight days out from the release. Uh, the release date for book three, Seed Among Good Ground, is July 9th. So hopefully that link will be in the show notes where you can pick up and pre-order that book. And and yeah, that's my main focus right now. I was going to say it's it's up for pre-order now so people can go out there and get it. We'll make sure we'll put that in the, the show notes in the description box. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about our guest author today. Devin writes fantasy and steampunk with a splash of romance and snarky female leads and is the founder of All Call Indie, a database of freelancers for indie authors. She lives in Northeast Florida with her husband and teen boys where they manage various animals and fruit trees. If you want to keep up to date with new releases, free reads, and her latest adventures, sign up for the monthly snippets and spoilers newsletter or check out her website. And welcome, Devin. Would you take a moment, please, and let us know anything else that we missed or anything else that you want to tell us about you? Hey, everyone. My name is Devin. I write under Devin Gambrell, which is my pen name. My first book, which is Crystal, was released in February of this year. And I have four more books that I'm working on. Book two, the first draft is done. I'm going through revisions and personal edits before sending off to beta readers in July, June, in June. <laughs> Yeah, and this is a, a very expansive world because I've, I've read The Witch's Crystal, which is kind of like later in this series. But so I'm, I'm curious to see how it's all going to work together once you get all the other books put out. Uh, and and I, I've read The Witch's Crystal and actually had Devin on the channel, uh, on my YouTube channel, uh, talking about the book a little bit. And by the time this does air, she will have already uh, been on self-publishing tips and tricks talking about Lisa Cron's story genius. So this is the second time we do have Devin back here. So, okay. Uh, what made you want to start writing? And can you tell us a little bit about your journey to self-publishing your first work? Um, well, I've been writing short stories since middle school. I even still have all of my notebooks managed to save those. I was not planning on publishing The Witch's Crystal, which started off as a short story that I showed my mom and she enjoyed it. But she said that she wanted to know what the story within the story was about. So I started writing it and figuring, oh, it's just going to be another short story. And it turned into a little bit longer and then a little bit longer. And I hopped on um, social media, YouTube, Instagram, and lo and behold, guess what? There's writing groups. <laughs> like, oh, okay, maybe I will publish this. And specifically I self-publishing because I don't like waiting. <laughs> I cannot imagine The Witch's Crystal as a short story. It is in a very expansive world and story building. I cannot see that as a short story. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, would you mind elaborating on that before we really get started into your whole author platform and your off-call indie before publishing? Can you give us a brief background into what led you to self-publish in the first place? aside from just saying you won that control? Um, aside from the control, uh, some of my other short stories that I've attempted to submit were never accepted. And more than half the time, you have to pay for the submission, wait a certain amount of time. Hopefully they get back to you. And I didn't want to go through that same process. And at the time that I was writing most of The Witch's Crystal, I was I did have a full-time job. So I was able to set the money aside for all of that funding. 
So you mentioned having a concise bulleted list that you wanted to go through before publishing your first book. Can you give us some outline of those key items that were on that list? Uh, yes. I I don't like being surprised. So I tend to research everything ahead of time and make a checklist as things come up. The main thing was I'd been out of school for a long time. <laughs> I graduated a long time ago. <laughs> So even getting back into creative writing and be good enough at writing to sell a story, I needed to go back and learn how to write creatively. I didn't go to school. YouTube is an excellent resource for learning how to write sentence structure and everything like that. So my number one thing, write a story. How do I do that? Characters, scenery, what do editors processes look like? I had no idea what a critique partner or beta reader was at all. And I was more than halfway through when that came up and I was like, oh, dang, <laughs> let, me, let me add this to the list now. <laughs> and then of course, how to sell it. What do I need? Okay, book covers. There's a whole slew of rules for book covers, depending on genre, latest trends. So that was another rabbit hole. And then finding out, well, newsletters are the best thing because they're yours. Don't depend on social media or anything like that. So how do I do that? And fitting it in the budget. And then marketing, I'm still, still working on the marketing. <laughs> So I think when we were talking a little bit before, when we were talking about how, you, you know, you set up your author platform well in advance of debuting your novel. Um, and I think that's when you kind of mentioned the, the bullet list. So I know you talked about the bullet list with your, you know, trying to improve as a writer and then learn about a little bit about marketing and stuff. Did you have a, a bullet list as well for like, okay, this is what I need to do to self-publish. I need to do this step and this step and this step. Like, I did. You did. And so what was like some of the, the, the best parts of that bullet list? Like what would it prepared you to make the decisions you made for your author platform? Um, the author bio, number one, or that you don't necessarily need a website, but absolutely need a landing page. You need a one-stop shop where people can find you, find your books, and anywhere else you are on social media if you go that route. I fiddled around with a couple of websites to figure out that landing page. I did not like Linktree. You're very limited when you first start off, and I was investing more money in the actual book covers at that time, but WordPress was within my range. As a new author, what were the biggest challenges you faced when setting up your author platform? And what strategies did you feel were the most effective for overcoming those challenges? Finding information it was scattered all over the place. Just trying to keep a resource list of where I found specific things, a huge challenge. Um, you can go on a Google search and find something and then you have three different answers for that same question because there's three different kinds of genres or authors think a different way and there's other different ways of doing things. So just trying to find a concise list, that was the hardest part. It used to be one of our questions, like with, the, with all these different resources, what did you do to narrow it down? We used to ask that question of our authors. It was when we we, we stopped asking, but because um, we got the pretty much the same answers, I think to the question over and over again. But yeah, there, there's so many resources out there for sure. Yeah, just I narrowed it down to my genre, definitely fantasy, um, and just tried to keep everything within line. I have a whole, whole notebook only on organizing how to write best practices, how to look for help and things like that. How did you balance platform building with the demands of writing and publishing your first book? It went hand in hand for the most part, because with every new thing that I learned, I had to upgrade or update my platforms. I, it was just balancing that is, like I said, hand in hand. It's a lot to do at, at first when you first get going and then maintaining it and changing it as things change. Yes. Yeah. So, um, okay. It, so, it, oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. I didn't want to wait to learn something in writing and publishing and then go back and fix my list. I wanted my list ready for the next book so it would be faster to go through. Gotcha. Okay. So one of the main reasons that we wanted to bring you on the show is because of what you did and what you accomplished before you did debut your first novel, which is setting up your author platform. And mostly my eye was on this project that you put together, All Call Indie, which is a database for freelancers who work with authors. And, um, you know, and I, I didn't know this until you said it somewhere. Like the other day, I heard you say that it was, um, they were authors who were freelancers offering services to authors. I didn't realize they were all authors too. That, that was something new that I, I learned. But I, I think that this idea and the concept is really fascinating. And 
And you did all of this before you even published your book, which I, I feel has a uh, had an influence in setting up your author platform and people getting to know you and you reaching out to the community, making those connections and networking, which is really, really important for authors. So I find this idea of All Call Indie fascinating and you setting up your author platform and doing all this. And I don't even know if you knew that you were like, if this was a conscious effort on your part of making all these connections as part of your author platform, but we'd love to know how it works and what services the website and the platform offers to authors. The database has everything in indie author needs. Editors, coaches, and I cannot stress enough for coaches, artists, map artists, character artists, proofreaders, beta readers, arc readers, marketing coaches, marketing classes, and the majority of the people in All Call Indie, I want to say 98% publish their own books. They are indie authors. And so if someone wants to, you know, they they do services for other indie authors uh, and they're an indie author, they, I, I know that you've had like an open call on your website at one point. Is that how it is? You'll have periods of open calls? The open call newsletter is for those freelancers who have a new availability. So they have an opening for an editing slot or they have deals on um, three character arts at this price this month, so to speak. It's their way of advertising for free. Okay. So any, any person who's, who provides services for indie authors can come to the website at any point and, and get added to the website? Like How does I that have, work? I have a, um, my critique partner and I get together at the end of every quarter for two weeks and we put out a sign-up sheet for new freelancers to join. The stipulation is, is they have to be a published author. It doesn't matter traditional or indie, although we do prefer indie because indie authors know what other indie authors are going through. But if they have a service, a YouTube site, informational videos, informational books, we add them at the end of every quarter. And sometimes we do sprinkle new ones in because they sign up for the open call newsletter with services but they're not in the database. And we for them to be in the database so everyone can find them. That's really incredible that you were able to build this entire platform. And that brings me to the question of what inspired you to create All Call Indie and how does it reflect your vision for a more connected indie author community? It goes back to everything scattered on the internet. I, When I first joined writing communities and everything, I knew this person did that thing, this person did another thing. But when I went back to look for them, I couldn't find them. So my critique partner, I asked her, I'm like, hey, here's my idea. And she is great with organizing. <laughs> I cannot stress enough how awesome she is. She helped me build the listing, they now questionnaires, the sign up sheets and everything like that. So we can have everything in one place. So it was like full, full circle. You were getting all this flood of information and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to help other indie authors and narrow this down, put it into neat little categories here with the help of your particular partner of organizing it so people can yeah. easily find what they're looking for without having this flood of information. I like yeah. that. So how has All Call Indie played a role in developing your specific author platform? Um, as I said before, coaching. <laughs> coaching was key because I knew I can, I'm savvy enough to do it myself, but sometimes I just need that like, oh, but did you think about this? Did you think about that? Here's what other people did. So it definitely, I reached out to a couple of coaches to help me not only with my writing, but as well as building my platform and <laughs> navigating building a website. <laughs> and that's new. I, I don't think I've ever, heard anyone say that they had someone, you know, coach them through building their author platform, which that's really amazing. Do you have someone like that on All Call Indie? <laughs> we have several marketing coaches on All Call Indie. Okay, awesome. Yes. How does All Call Indie facilitate collaboration between indie authors and publishing professionals? You mentioned that there was a newsletter. So does somebody need to be a part of that? And then they just look up, say, I need an editor, I need a marketer, whomever, and then they try and make a connection that way. Or is there a more streamlined process to connect to? Um, they can go on to the All Call Indie page, and it's at the moment it is attached to my website, just on digital purposes. <laughs> there is a search bar up there for searching, or what I plan on doing in the future is a lot of these people come from other writing communities, and I want to put those writing communities on the website. That way, if they just have a general question that they want to ask anyone, they can go there. But that will be next quarter. <laughs> So when you say putting those communities on the website, do you mean like as a, a way to like chat with those different people or in, in what way? Sorry, if that makes sense. Um, not not just chatting with people, but for that sense of community. Mm -hmm. Most most of the other indie authors I know are very introverted. So anything on a website is friendly, especially when you don't have to worry about the face to face. Let's meet up for coffee, awkward silence sort of deal. <laughs> 
we're all introverted here too. So if you're you're saying most of the other authors you know are inter are introverted, I'm like, wait, we're all introverted here too. <laughs> yeah. Um, what marketing strategies have you employed to promote your books and all call indie? Um, so far, just for all call indie, there are no extra social media sites. I have the database attached to my website, and we have the Substack that sends out the newsletters or blog newsletter slash blog post. The same deal for that. As far as marketing my book, it is something I am so working on. I did find a marketing coach, um, but it's been busy. It's the end of the year. Um, my son's getting ready to graduate high school and go into trade school. My youngest is transitioning into high school and we have two new puppies. So <laughs> I'll get to that later. <laughs> and you want to take a trip to Europe one of these days? Yeah, that was supposed to be this summer. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> What have been some of the most valuable lessons you've learned through the process of building your author platform and launching All Call Indie? Everything changes. Don't set in stone. Don't let your heart break because something didn't work. There's always something else you can move on to. That The best part about writing is you can always go back and change it, edit it, ask somebody to say, hey, can you look at this? So looking back, is there anything that you would have done differently with the launch of either All Call Indie or your book? I don't think I would do anything differently because even the things that didn't work was a learning experience experience. You can't go wrong with knowing what didn't work. And a lot of the things that I tried worked for other people, but did not work for me. So... Well, and I think there's this thing like people who are who make a lot of money, like millionaires and stuff like that, they, they fail more businesses than they succeed at. But it, it's the things that they learn and their failures that make them successful in the business they succeed in. Yeah. So I think it's a really good way of looking at that. So are there specific resources on All Call Indie that you would recommend for authors unsure of where to start? Coaching. I have yet to meet a coach that did not have a free introductory period. I haven't met one because they want to talk to you first to get to know you, to get to know what you're doing. And and then they give you some ideas of what you can do. And you can take that list of ideas and do it yourself without actually paying for the service. Um, also, a lot of coaches have like blog posts or recommended books that you, you can look up without paying for. So you can figure it out yourself or you can go ahead with the coaching sessions. And I'm sure that also helps to see if like personalities align, like communication, you know, is yeah. different between everybody and if communication styles are similar. So exactly. Yeah. So when you are working with your coach, do you work with them? for like a specific amount of time? Are they still your writing coach? Or did you just learn what you needed from them and then you were able to do it on your own? I had problems with a huge thing that I got back from the beta readers is uh, sentence structure. So I got with my coach specifically for that. And I think I did two to three sessions with her and I would show her, I would share my work with her and she would break it apart, explain everything. And I would come back with a revised version and then we work on a different part and then a different part. So I no longer have that issue with my writing and I didn't have to put my editor through that. <laughs> what are your future plans for All Call Indie and how do you envision it evolving and growing to better serve the self-publishing community? I hope to have All Call Indie on its own website with a better navigational setup. As of right now, it's just, I put it together, I take their logos, I resize it to what will fit on the website and then I copy and paste their information, copy and paste their links. I would like something where when we have the open sign up where they can just go in and put their information there and they are there. When you were talking about the writing communities and stuff, and I know you've got your own discord for you, I was wondering then, and I didn't ask it, but I mean, is that something you thought about doing is doing a discord for All Call Indie? Um, there is a discord for All Call Indie. I am not active on it at all. There's maybe eight people on there at the moment. And those are the people that I engage with most on discord. So if you could only pass on one thing to aspiring self-published writers looking to think outside the box with their author platforms, what would be your best tip or trick? As far as author platforms, I would say get a landing page. You don't have to worry about your newsletter right away. That's something you can work on later. It does help. You can share a few background things, um, daily life, your writing schedule, word counts, things like that. But if it's too much, because I know full-time jobs take up a lot. They do, especially if you have a family. And I don't have younger kids, but I remember what it was like when they were little and dig 
daycare was not an option, <laughs> but a landing page. Get a link tree, get something free, put up a short bio, what you're working on. And if you're on social media, add your social media link. Awesome. So uh, how can our viewers and listeners get involved with All Call ND, whether they're offering services or seeking them? We have a subset at the moment. A social media post for All Call ND is non-existent other than my and my partners. And I'll make sure I give you her link because she has some pretty good books. And Discord, I will also have the I'll Call ND link Discord. But you can anyone can either reach me or my critique partner, Cheryl. Well, oh, it's really helpful. Can you tell us about your next book and when it will come out? And next book, uh, like I said in the beginning, I finished the first draft going through revisions. I have it set for line editing July 15th. And then I have my copy edits for September 2nd. So maybe November-ish. Okay, well, we'll look forward to that for sure. Uh, so now we like to do something a bit different. We would love to do a round of rapid fire questions where you answer each question as quickly as possible. So are you game to try it out? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what comes first for you? The characters, the setting, or the plot? Characters. Planner, pantser, or planter? Planster. Coffee, tea, or hot chocolate? Coffee. Morning writer or night writer? Neither. What are you? What? I am an afternoon writer. My golden time is 11 o'clock. Yeah, interesting. Sorry, Ben. No, you're fine. <laughs> What's your favorite book you've written? The first one, which is Crystal. <laughs> I guess we should have expanded that to short stories as well, but that's fine. <laughs> oh, it's your least favorite book that you've written or story. I have a short story that no one has, one person has read. And that was a few years ago. I was just trying to remember. I think I used that story as a character builder for Amabella and Tannis subconsciously because I use those characters in this book. But it was set in a modern time. It had to deal with um, clubs, designing clubs and things oh, like that. So Amabella and, Tan and Tannis in today's society. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right. So complete the sentence. The best thing about writing is editing. Yay. What's your favorite? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What's your favorite novel of all time? Favorite novel of all time is the David Eddings books. Just not just one. The first 10 of mm -hmm. the Bell Guard and the Malorian. Childhood favorites. Favorite fantasy trope. I don't think I have one. Found family? Oh, uh, the chosen one or yeah. magical item. If you could write any other genre, what would it be? Steampunk. Well, it says steampunk in your bio. Yeah, it does, yes. <laughs> um, if I could write any other genre... I would maybe love to try my hand at some sci-fi. Mm, yes, me too. Well, a lot I, I, of technical I, jargon, though, for me. Well, you can do soft sci-fi. Like the, I have a couple of sci-fi pieces written. They're all soft sci-fi. I, I okay. used some ideas. Like I used some of Tesla's ideas um, and built off of those. But okay. Well, you've answered all of our questions. So <laughs> before we wrap up, please tell our listeners where they can find you and purchase your books. Um, you can find me here on YouTube, and I'm more active on Instagram than anywhere else. My books can be found anywhere. I I've got a universal link that I'll get to you, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and of course, most all of the eBooks. Yeah. And we'll definitely make sure those links get down into the show notes uh, for the podcast and in the description box for YouTube. So thank you so much, Devin, for joining us today and giving us some of your insight and thinking and how you developed your author platform and I'll call Andy. This was really great to learn more about it. And thank you for having me. It was fun. <laughs> Next on the podcast, we'll have nonfiction and children's book author and YouTuber Emma Rosen, who will be discussing with us protective business structures like LLCs. And that will do it. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much to our incredible listeners and viewers for joining us on our exploration of everything self-publishing. We hope you found our podcast to be a treasure trove of insights and inspiration. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider leaving a review on your favorite podcast platform or thanks on our YouTube episodes. Don't forget, you can catch all of our past episodes on YouTube, Spotify, and other major podcast platforms. Keep writing, keep publishing, and we'll see you next time.